One pattern that we're going to be using heavily going forward is the repository pattern. Now, a repository is a storage location often used for safety or preservation, and that's exactly how we'll be using it. More specifically, repositories store entities. So let's think about traditional models for a moment. We might have a model for a member. The member has an identity, a name, and maybe we track if their account is active or not. Now, we're working our application and we need to retrieve a specific member to work with. Often, you'll do this with an ORM. The code on the left uses an active record implementation called Eloquent. The code on the right uses a data mapper implementation called Doctrine. Both of these examples give us the member that we asked for. Now, let's say that we update the member's state. Perhaps we set them as active. Then we want to store them again. It might look something like this. Eloquent objects know how to save themselves. Doctrine uses an entity manager for mapping the object to a relational database. It's not difficult to believe that the same exact loading and saving code will be replicated in our application dozens of times. Every time we need to load a member based on their ID, we need to execute the same code. So now let's look at the same example, but using a repository. Now, the code to retrieve and store the entity is identical whether or not we're using Active Record, Data Mapper, or any number of other options for rebuilding and persisting members. Now, let's add the ability to select users based on their active status. Again, we'll see that the code examples for each implementation are identical. This is the nature of the repository pattern. It abstracts the implementation of entity storage and retrieval out of our higher level code. If and when we need to change what it means to retrieve active users, then we only need to change it in one location. For example, we might have to convert from selecting members based on the active bit alone to determining the member's active status based on the date of a subscription or another factor. The repository pattern allows you to hide away your persistence related code, but it does so by representing a collection. Repositories represent collections that contain all entities of a specific type. A member repository is a collection that contains all members. You can retrieve them based on criteria, and those criteria may include or exclude any or all members in the system. As with other collections, we'll have a base set of functionality. We need to be able to add entities, and since all entities contain identity by definition, it's safe to assume that we'll need to retrieve them by ID. We can continue adding functionality to our repositories as our use cases demand. In this example, we have an invoice repository. If an invoice object is created in our system and we never add it to the repository, then when we try to retrieve it, it won't be there. The invoice was never persisted. It's essentially trashed and gone. The repository is the definitive collection for each entity type. If an entity hasn't been stored in the repository, it hasn't been stored. Every time an entity is modified, it must be stored back into the repository or the modification isn't persisted. Let's take a look at an implementation. Here is the invoice repository's interface. We can find an invoice by ID. We can store invoices and retrieve them. Perhaps we need all of the paid invoices or all of the unpaid invoices. Perhaps we need to page the results into chunks of a certain count. Each requirement that we discover can be communicated and expressed in this repository interface. Now let's create a few different implementations for this interface. First, our active record implementation. Here, the objects themselves know how to interact with the storage system. We inject an instance of a model, then we can use it for queries. We can query based on identity or get all records, all paid records, or all unpaid records. Active record objects have the knowledge to be able to store themselves in the database. However, we defer this behavior to the repository so that the implementation doesn't slip out into higher level code. Let's look at another implementation, this time using the Doctrine data mapper for PHP. The implementation is a bit different, but the outcomes are identical. If you're familiar with the .NET ecosystem, this is similar to Entity Framework. We can see that this repository accomplishes all of the same goals that our Active Record repository does. Our final invoice repository implementation stores entities in memory. We're satisfying the requirements of the interface, but this implementation is dramatically different from the ORM implementations. But ultimately, any code that consumes an invoice repository object won't be able to tell the difference between an ORM implementation or an in-memory implementation. This is the ultimate goal of the repository pattern.
Now, the purpose of a repository isn't to change from one ORM to another mid-project. Similarly, we don't use it just because it makes, for example, automated testing simple. The repository pattern is used when you want to abstract the implementation details of entity storage away from the rest of your application. Decoupling your storage implementation from your higher level application code is the true goal and it results in these advantages and more. For example, when coupling is reduced, our code modification becomes less prone to error. It's not unimaginable to find the logic for retrieving an active member in 10 places in your application, including controllers, command line tools, queue workers, views, etc. Perhaps members have an active bit, it can be set to on or off. Then, a requirements update from the client comes in and we have to change the way it works. We need the logic for what determines if a user is active to change to the termination date of their subscription. In order to make this change, your team will have to successfully modify all of the places that the code exists. If you miss one, then bugs will appear. With the repository pattern, you have to simply change it in one spot. It's far easier to ensure that one change is correct, and this is only one benefit that you'll find when using this pattern. Imagine that you want to unit test this code. Without some global level magic, you really can't. It's going to hit the database, so you're going to have to incorporate a bunch of additional infrastructure to be able to test this in isolation. But if you replace it with a repository, it's trivial to inject an instance of the in-memory implementation, run the code, and verify that the entity has been changed according to spec. We can test simply without having to mock or add any global level magic. Finally, let's look at these two interfaces side by side. What's the difference? The repository on the right communicates a bit more that database storage is occurring. The repository on the left more communicates the collection metaphor. Other than the names of the methods, they are identical. They do the exact same thing, and the only difference is the mental model that they're designed around. You might find that you prefer one over the other, but it's worth noting that both are used frequently and that you can expect to see a variety of approaches to the naming of repository methods. To summarize, the repository pattern is a tool for abstracting the data persistence implementation away from your higher level domain oriented code. Consequences of the reduced coupling include easier testing, more flexibility, and a reduction to the amount of code changes necessary, which ultimately brings fewer bugs.